the bell icon to turn on notifications. When it comes to a site, it's critical to understand how permissions work. It's really important to understand who sees what and who sees whom within the interface so that you can avoid any misunderstanding between your partners and colleagues, as well as data leaks that could happen if you invite the wrong people on the wrong object. Let's have a look first at the teams. On the left, you have a list of teams. If you open a team and go to the team settings, you can see the three possible privacy types. Let's go through them. Public to organization means any member of the organization can see the team and can join freely. They can join just by clicking on the team name and then they'll get access to whatever is inside the team. Private means that a member inside the team needs to invite you to go inside the team. That means you will not even see the team exist before being invited to join the team. The third one is membership by request. You need to request access to the team. That means you will see the team in the side nav, but you will have to ask someone inside to give you access to join. When you have access to a team, then you have access to what projects are inside the team, unless those projects are private. Inside the team settings, you also have a list of members. You can see all the members that have a full access to the team as well as members that have specific access to project or task within that team. Those members that you see either have access to one specific project or they have been added as a collaborator on one specific task. And you can grant them full access to the team or you can remove them altogether. Let's have a look now at the project themselves. If you go into a project like this one, you see a list of project members at the top. Those are the members of the project that have access to all the tasks within that project. Let's go into the share option to see what's available for us. First, you can see a list of members. They have specific permissions. They can either edit the entire project or they can only comment on tasks without being able to edit anything. This is where you can define the different permissions for project members. At the bottom, you also have an indication of whether or not the project is public, like this one, or private. And you can make a project private by just clicking on that button. And you see inside the site now that making a project private will actually add a small lock to the project name. So a team member has access to all the public project within the team. If they are specifically added to private project, then they will have access to the task within that project. Inside a given project, you can't really hide or show specific tasks to people. It's either everything or nothing. So project members at the top, plus anyone within the team if the team is private, or anyone within the organization if the team is public, will have access to the task. Usually when you open a task, you have indication on privacy at the top of the right pane. In that case, the task is visible to collaborators as well as people within the project. That message isn't clear. It might be confusing, so just be careful that task is seen by everyone inside the project. However, there is a place where you can actually have private task. This is inside my task. When you go inside my task and create task outside of any project, for example, this one, this one does not belong to any project, as you can see. It has a special announcement at the top saying that it's private to you, meaning that nobody can find the task either by using the search or by going to your My Task view. However, you could decide to make the task public. In that case, the task will be seen from within the search as well as on your personal page when people look for your name inside the search. For example, if I look for Christy Tarragon, I have access to her My Task view and I only see things I have the right to see. In that case, things within project I have access to, including subtasks of tasks within those projects. Now let's talk about the difference between members and guests. Members are the people with an email address from your official domain name. Guests are people without an email address from the official domain name like gmail.com, for example. 
guests have to be added specifically to objects to gain access. And one thing that is very often misunderstood is the fact that two guests added on task do not see each other. So if you go on a task, one single task like this one, and you add two guests as collaborators, they will not see each other. Each one will see a private user being there, as well as a private user posting comments. So you might sometime end up in a situation where people are discussing without knowing who they are respectively. In order to get out of that situation, you will have to add the guests at a higher level, add them as project members or add them as team members. You can also have one at the team level and have another one at the project level. They will then see each other. However, be really careful where you add guests, whether it's at the team or project level, because they will gain access to whatever is inside that entity. If you add a guest at the team level, they get access to everything, including future projects your colleagues might create. As a conclusion, it's important to understand the different layers of permissions you have, team, project, task, as well as members and guests, and make sure that you always invite people at the right level to give them access to the right information. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.